tercera vez. Good afternoon, everybody. And sorry for all the trouble we're having today with the sound. Hopefully, you can listen to us now. We are broadcasting jazz yes, with the microphone. Uh, so, what's going on today? Today, we are going to be visiting uh, Pamplona's Association of Nativity Scenes. Okay? Here we have a uh, great association. It is one of the oldest ones in Spain. It is started in uh, 1953. And today we are with the president, Mr. Uh, Pedro Javier Martinez. Gracias por recibirnos. Thank you so, so much for welcoming us today. And the thing is that this association, it has almost 700 members and they work all year round to do these beautiful nativity scenes. Hola, Janet. Eh, hola, Diane. Diana. So the thing is that eh, they have this year exposed, as you can see, a lot of them. We're not going to go through all of them. We're going to just see a few of them. Okay, so eh, shall we start? Empezamos a enseñarles algunos. Sí, okay, bien. so let me turn the camera around because you don't want to see me. You want to see these incredible pieces of art. About nativities, tenemos diferentes. Tenemos Pamplona, tenemos orientales, tenemos de todas las cosas. Este es un orientalista. Sí, bueno, eh, la tradición de los Belenes, sobre todo aquí en el norte de España, Cataluña, Navarra, etcétera, etcétera, pues eh, hacemos Belenes de ambientación orientalista del siglo XIX, digamos, porque no sabemos cómo era el siglo I, y hacemos Belenes con ambientación local. Okay, so what he's saying is that uh, all of these nativity scenes that we have here, they are in different styles. This one is what is called Orientalism, okay? Uh, and it is based on how people from the 18th century thought Jerusalem or Bethlehem looked like. This one, let's say, is kind of a free interpretation because as you can see here, we have the ocean and there was no ocean. Back then, I mean, there's no ocean in there, but it's a beautiful, beautiful representation. Here, the most important scene, it is, of course, the nativity, which is super beautiful, and we have the, we have the three wise men, the three kings, paying respect to baby Jesus. But what makes all of this incredible, to me, especially this one, it's, it's like being in a... I don't know, this time period, it's everything beautiful. This is a market, it's a bar or what is No, it's a market. It's a, oh, it's a market, Persian market. And you have all the little details. You see that people selling all the pots and everything. On the first floor, there's a family on the balcony. It's incredible. And this one is kind of peculiar because we have seen the nativity but also here we have the presentation of Jesus Christ into the temple. Ajá. Ahora dice eh, Janet, eh, pregunta si estos belenes están expuestos todo el año o solo en Navidad. No, esto lo exponemos del 3 de diciembre este año hasta el 9 de enero. So only from this, uh, December 3rd all the way to January 7th. No, 9, no? Okay. El 9 de diciembre. January 9th, so only in Christmas time, which is a little pity that we cannot see these jewels all year round. I love this one, porque tenemos un encierro. Sí. <laughs> we have... Una concesión a, a, a lo local. So as you can see here, we have this orientalist uh, type of uh, scene, but hey, we are from Pamplona and we do the running of the bulls but in this one, check these little kids doing the running of the goats, which I think is so cute. And they were wearing the red bandana and the red sash. It's so, so beautiful. Susana pregunta... I am to rest of the... ¿Dónde almacenáis todo esto el resto del año? Bueno, gran parte de ellos en la basura. Y el resto, pues, eh, eh, se les busca un uso in another place, in a parroquia, in a... Un... So, it was perdón. Susana is asking, where do you search them the rest of the year? And I asked him, and he said, some of them, unfortunately, in the garbage, because we do not have room in our houses anymore. Which is like, what? You throw this away? 
It's just that the other ones, the big ones, the important ones, what they do is they save them. Uh, but yeah, Susana is like, oh no. La Susana dice que eso es terrible. Que vaya bueno. algo así a la basura. Hola, James. Las figuras no, eh. Okay, not the figures, <laughs> but the structure, the houses, and everything. So let's start showing some of the beautiful. Well, by the way, the exhibition is open. That's why we're wearing masks. And we have people in front of us, okay? So we'll try to. Hay un guiri en la, en la fuente. Hay un guiri. ¿Dónde? En la fuente. ¿eh? Oy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is one of the most popular squares in the city of Pamplona, okay? It's perfect. And that up there is Pamplona's cathedral. And maybe <laughs> what he's saying, okay, during the week of the running of the bulls here in Pamplona, we have a tradition. Well, we don't have a tradition, but people from Australia came over here and they found a fountain and they jumped down from the fountain. Maybe you have seen images of that. Well, he says that in this little thing, look at the angel up there. He says, he's the Australian angel. He's about to jump down from the fountain. So I think it's kind of funny. It's like, ha ha. But there you go, you have the three wise men coming on that side. Pasad, pasad. Gracias. So all these kids are like, oh, we don't want to bother. It's okay. Kids never bother. So it's super cool. Okay. So let's go to the next one, which to me, it's, I must say, my favorite one. Este para mí es mi favorito. Bueno. Para mí. Sí, bueno. <laughs> tiene muchas particularidades. Las figuras están hechas por un socio. Eh? Wow, que, qué pasa. Que las ha, que ha hecho el Belén también, con otros compañeros. Y es un, la escena de la Virgen y San José buscando posada en un ambiente del Valle del Bactán y en vez de ir con un burro van con el carro con todos los enseres so, y están en la posada. The thing is that this image represents one of the most beautiful valleys that we have in Navarra, which is called Bactán Valley. And this uh, scene was done by one, uh, one member who made even all the figures and instead of putting the nativity scene he said that he wanted to represent mary and joseph looking for a place to stay so there you have them with the two oxes uh, no no looking for a place to uh, to rest for the night so i love love this nativity scene okay let's go vamos al siguiente the next one I think this is funny. What does it look like? Does anybody think this might be something? Esto que es? El comedor de, de Hogwarts. So if you are a Harry Potter fan, if you have watched the movies, this is Howard's, the dining room in Howard's. And who is here? Well, Howard's is a school for witches and warlocks. Para magos. Para magos. And the three wise men who come to give uh, gifts to baby Jesus. Here we say Los Reyes Magos, the royal uh, warlocks. So this, we have Balthazar. We have there Melchior. And on the other side, we have Gaspar. So we're just missing Harry Potter in here. Solo nos falta Harry Potter. Ese que nos falta aquí, cachis. Then the next one, it's a very local one. I think it's cool because it has running water. And it means, it's, esto es un molino. Un molino. Un sí. molino de los de toda la vida de piedra, molino... Sí, sí, movido por agua. So this is a traditional meal, okay, from here. Uh, here we have a lot of water. Unfortunately, this last week we've had way too much water and we had a, all of the rivers in Navarra has been overflowing. But here, what we have is a traditional meal. And if you see even under the nativity, you have the stones moving to make the grain become flour. So I think it's so, so beautiful. It's like super nice. Vamos a ver los siguientes. Okay, well, uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna, as we're gonna show you a couple. Uh, oh, this is a very special one because this nativity scene was done in dos fines de semana por ocho personas. Doce. Doce. It was done only in four days, in two different weekends. 12 people working 10 hours a day 
they made this incredible, incredible nativity scene. ¿Por qué tan rápido? ¿Qué pasó? Bueno, en realidad esto era un curso de formación de belenistas. Cada grupo hizo un plano. Aquí se ve un, pla un primer plano, un segundo plano, que es el grupo de casas, y el paisaje. Pasad, pasad. Entonces, pues, eh, lo tenían que hacer rápido porque... So the thing is, was a class, and each team, they decide to do one different uh, fragment of it. Okay, so in two weekends, they did this incredible, incredible scene. Claro. It's incredible. Son 24 horas, 12 personas. Es un montón de horas. Es 24 horas. Hey, cago. Uh, 12 people is a lot of hours. Everybody working together. Este tiene la especialidad de que la pintura está reforzada por la luz y la luz por la pintura. Okay. Esa puerta que se ve en claro oscuro, el claro está pintado, además de que recibe luz. Anda que no. ¿Eh? Okay. So he says that here the light is very important and If you see this green door, that is half of it, it's lighted, and the other part has a shadow, he says, no, that's not true. That is painted. Half of it is painted in yellows, and the other one in grays, so it becomes that dark shadow thing. So it's not light, it's just also the work of painting that is so, so, so important in all of this, right? which I think it's really incredible. So, uh, a little bit about history. Okay, let's, I've been talking with Pedro Javier, un poco de la historia de los Belénes. Empiezan en el siglo II, ¿no? Después de Cristo. Bueno, las representaciones Marx. de la natividad. So, the representations of nativity start on the, or the first ones that we have, come from the second century, obviously after Christ, and we find them at the catacombs in Priscilla, okay? But uh, we have to go later until San Francis of Assisi on the 13th century. All right, let me show you this beautiful scene. On the 13th century, he, he celebrated, let's say, the first Christmas mass with people, with animals and the whole thing. From there, a uh, Florentine artist, his name was Arnaldo di Cambrio. Arnaldo di Cambrio. He was the first one who made in marble, sculpted in marble, a family, okay? And that was the one that the rest of the Franciscan monks copied and spread it all around the world. Uh, here, Los Reyes Católicos. Eh, Arnaldo di Cambrio le hizo el encargo un, el primer Papa Franciscan. Okay, so the first Franciscan Pope commissioned Uh, Arnaldo de, Ca uh, de Cabri Cambrio to do this nativity scene. Okay, so I think that's uh, the Franciscans has a lot to do. Here in Spain, we have we know that uh, the Spanish Catholic king Isabel, you know Isabella and Ferdinand, she carried always with her a nativity scene. So we've always had it, but it's not until the 18th century when the crown of Spain let's say conquer Naples, and Charles III of Spain went to Naples with some nativity scenes, and there, los artistas napolitanos desarrollaron lo que conocemos hoy como sí. los And the, there, the Napolitan artists are the ones who made it all huge, okay? So, from the 18th century, it's when we started doing all of these incredible, incredible, huge nativity scenes. So, we have seen Classical, local, and then we have the reivindicative one, el reivindicativo. Sí, sí. This is a very modern one, and what this is, estamos hablando aquí de cómo recibimos los europeos a los inmigrantes. Bueno, la Sagrada Familia son de raza africana, y el resto pues son de diversas razas, pero claramente marginados. So, what this is talking about, it's about how us, especially Europeans, how we are welcoming or unwelcoming immigrants. We have to think that the Holy Family, they had to run away, okay? So let's say that they were immigrants. So what this uh, nativity scene tells us about, it's back there we have the ocean that all of these people, they have to cross and then they find themselves in this not very good 
or to say the least, horrible places around Europe. We have them in Spain, we have them in Italy, we have them in France, everywhere. And uh, all of these people, they are poor like baby Jesus. So this nativity scene wants us to make us think that this was baby Jesus first century, we're in the 21st century and we're still dealing with all of that. And here, uh, in this little poster, or this comic, it says, it reads, in this family there's not one boss, it is a cooperative. In this family being the world, we all have to be together and we all need to take care of all of these, let's say, illegal immigrations or, I don't know, I think it's a very beautiful nativity scene explaining all of these new things that go on. I think it's a global issue. Anyway, this one, okay, take a look at this one, because I think, let's see if we can capture. It's raining inside. So don't you think it's incredible that they even go as far as putting a rain, a thunderstorm inside of here? I think it is so, so beautiful. Tenéis que tener una técnica que para qué? Para poner gotitas de lluvia, no me fastidies. Bueno, es que es, cae en todo el patio, cae... Oh, it's oh. I'd say that it's incredible, the technique they have. He says that this one, the technique, it took them more than the place, that how to do, how to recreate the rain. It's probably the most important thing, or the one, the thing that took more bueno, time. Para entender un poco el por qué tiramos los belenes, hay que tener presente que una definición del Belén es que es un, una representación de, de la infancia de Cristo con figuras móviles sobre un escenario efímero. O sea, okay. Todo esto es efímero. So the tradition of the nativity scenes is to have the representation of the birth of baby Jesus with sculptures that can be moved in an ephemeral background. That is why they throw all of these things away. Because, yes, they're beautiful, but they, by tradition, they have to be ephemeral. Which I think is terrible. Because it's their works of art. Digo que es terrible, porque son obras de arte. Tirar esto. And what about this one? Aquella señora que sale de la pastelería es el vivo retrato de una belenista. No. Okay. So, this is how, by tradition, inside of the churches, we have this nativity scene. So we have a nativity scene. Inside, there is yet another one, okay? So look at that beautiful inside of the nativity scene, other nativity scene. So this one, it is a church, it doesn't exist, it's not a real church, but uh, the door is open and we can take a glance into the pastry shop all the way at the back. And the thing is that the lady coming out of with those little cakes or whatever she has bought is a portrait of the lady who made this. An artist, as he loved so much, this nativity scene made a scale figure uh, for this lady, which I think is so, so beautiful. But even look at the stained windows, the rose windows. It's, que es una preciosidad. Bueno, caballero, estamos, ¿no? Muy bien. So, por aquí Diana nos dice que, me, que me se ocurre tirar uno, que se lo mandemos a ella. Bueno, eh, que, venga, que venga a verlos y, y se lo lleva. So, if you guys come over here, he says that he'll get one for you. So, anyway, Pedro Javier, muchísimas, muchísimas gracias. Gracias a vosotros. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I'm just trying to bring you a little bit of the Christmas traditions that we have over here in Pamplona. Uh, as you all know, all of these tours, they are tip supportive. If you want to leave us a tip, my PayPal account is right there. If you cannot tip me, perfect. But there's also another way you can help me, which is sharing this video. So thank you, everybody. I will see you on Sunday on cooking class. So, amigos, muchas gracias. Bye -bye. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, have a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday.